Hello everyone, back in today's Spur video. So we're going to have a look at where it's changed to 14 days for today's Spur video. Day 10 will take us to around the 8th of September and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the GFS and ECM ensembles. They run to around a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That's going to take us towards the last stages of uh, September. So it's been a busy old day at Galsworth is today. So uh, first video released was the third and final autumn 2020 season one around. And that's getting all the long range models together for one last time to see what they're all showing uh, for the uh, for the autumn. So uh, that's ahead of the autumn forecast being released tomorrow, of course. We're releasing Galsworth's autumn forecast as the first video up tomorrow morning. Uh, also, uh, weekend forecast was on a Saturday, your detailed weekend launch. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's been released as well. So, uh, I shall uh, get on with your 10 to 14 day video update for you uh, very shortly. Uh, but before I do anything else, just to say a big thank you to my good friend uh, Ryan, Ryan56. We did a uh, live stream last night uh, just for like 50 minutes or so after 10 o'clock. Uh, had a bit of a laugh. It was a fun stream, so have a listen back to it. On, uh, on catch up but Ryan gave us two enormous donations uh, two enormous donations uh, so I've got to say thank you so much for your super chat donations in last night's live stream to Ryan56 thank you so much Ryan56 for those uh, donations incredibly kind and, and generous and I was absolutely shocked when, when I saw how much you was uh, super chatting us so so Thank you, thank you so much to Ryan56 for, for those donations. That was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, Ryan, uh, for, for doing that. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to get on video for you uh, right now. I and mean, then at the end of the video, I shall talk you through what's happening tomorrow. It's going to be a big day tomorrow, uh, Gazzo. So I'll talk you through what's happening tomorrow at the end of the video. Right, so we're going to start off in the tropical Atlantic, then. So, uh, Laura, still across northeastern parts of the states uh, at the moment, or sort of in the Midwest, heading towards the northeast. So, uh, currently giving uh, maximum sustained winds. Are, it's, a, it's the remnants of Laura now, by the way, just the remnants. Giving maximum sustained winds of 25 miles per hour, with a minimum set pressure of 1,004 millibars, moving very quickly eastwards at 28 miles per hour. I think that will be gone off these charts for National Hurricanes. Uh, by tomorrow. We've got two disturbance areas. We've got a yellow X just here and we've got a yellow X just here. Let's have a look at them uh, one by one. So let's deal with disturbance one first of all. Disturbance one is giving a is uh, is giving is giving a twenty percent chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours and a 30% chance in the next five days. They're saying a tropical wave located about 550 miles east of the Windward Islands is producing disorganised showers and thunderstorms. Some gradual development of this system is possible during the next several days uh, while it moves westwards at about 15 miles per hour towards the Lesser Antilles. Regardless of development, this system will likely produce gusty winds and locally heavy rainfall across portions of the Windward and Leeward Islands on Sunday. We've also got this uh, yellow extra here, which is Disturbance 2. This has a 0% chance of cyclone formation in the next few days, but a 40% chance, a higher chance, in the next five days. This might become our next named storm. They're saying another tropical wave is located over the eastern Atlantic Ocean, just southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. This system is expected to uh, move very slowly over the next several days, and some development is possible early next week over the eastern or central tropical Atlantic. So probably not doing anything immediately, but that one looks like it could could develop into uh, something with a 40% chance of cyclone formation. So again, all rise be on the tropical Atlantic in the coming days. Uh, right, secondary temperature is looking like this. It's continuing to slide downwards. So uh, we're currently standing at 18.2. That's 2.4 degrees above average provisional to yesterday, 28th of August. We've still got a couple more days of a month to go, of course, and some unusually cold nights. So as, as I've been saying in videos, there's no chance of an 18 Celsius CT August. We are not going to have an 18 Celsius CT August. We're going to finish up in the 17s somewhere, and the question will be where we finish up. So the wait for an 18 Celsius CT August goes on. Looking ahead to September, though, we've got a lot of uncertainty continuing. So these are the 500 millibar high dominant flow charts from the Penn State University for the next week to 10 days, with the ECMWF on the top and the GFS down here on the bottom. So 500 millibars is an area in actually high pressure, low pressure, uh, being moved out by the jet stream. Red and orange 
orange extrapolate high pressure blue to low pressure. Uh, this takes us like into the end of the first week of September. We can see that with the ECM, it really is a high pressure fest. The ECM is a high pressure fest as we come to the end of the first week of September. Uh, with uh, with all of this uh, high pressure sort of uh, sitting over the country jet stream and pushing off as well, so we're on the warm side of a jet stream, and that really is like like very dry and uh, quite warm uh, conditions really there. Uh, but you come down to the GFS, look at this, it's very very different. The GFS is very very different uh, between days uh, seven to ten, uh, with high pressure pulled out into middle of the uh, middle of the North Atlantic and low pressure to the north of Scotland. This brings in quite a strong westerly flow. Uh, across the country, got quite a strong westerly flow coming in uh, across the country with showers or longer spells of rain, and uh, and yeah, so that looks pretty unsettled actually as we go into the seven to ten day time frame. Whereas the uh, ECM is much more high pressure dominated and anticyclonic. Big contrast between those two miles, and you'll see it in a moment what they're uh, doing in terms of the actual uh, weather patterns. Uh, right, so these are the upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles of the GFS model for the. Uh, next week, 10 days. The red line is the 30 year other air temperature average. The temperature is going to be cool through the rest of the weekend into the start of next week. So, below average temperatures through the rest of the weekend into the start of next week. As we go to the middle of next week, the temperatures are picking up. The upper air temperatures are lifting up through the middle of next week. Then they're dropping back a little bit uh, through towards the end of next week and then they lift up again until they drop down again. It's just looking a little bit zonal actually, that doesn't it? So, uh, we've got the warmer uh, spell there. We've got cooler, warmer, uh, cooler, and some. That does look a little bit zonal. There are some notably hot outliers still. These ones up here are notably hot outliers in terms of the upper air temperatures, but they aren't particularly well supported uh, by, by the GFS and its ensembles. And these uh, ensembles down here are a lot cooler uh, as well. So contrasting air masses up and down with the temperature and uh, just a little bit mixed, really classic early September weather. Precipitation-wise, there's a lot of dry weather coming up through the rest, through rest of the weekend into uh, the early part of next week. And then later next week, it turns more unsettled and these more unsettled conditions continue through the second week of September. Temperature anomalies from the 29th of August to the 6th of September are going to be a little bit cooler than average, a little bit cooler than average with a temperature anomaly from the 29th of August to the 6th of September. Precipitation anomalies from the 29th of August to the 6th of September are going to be just a little bit on the drier than average side. This is how the latest wind flow map is looking from EarthNorthSchool.net. So winds are in from the north now. Low pressure has moved towards the east of the country. So low pressure is sitting in the southern North Sea. Winds have turned into the north. And yeah, we're looking pretty cool. We're looking pretty cool with a ridge uh, building out to west. That's going to settle things down through this bank holiday weekend. We've got showers today. Once those are out of the way, things will uh, be settling down through the weekend. But the main thing is going to be the northerly wind. That northerly wind is going to bring it bringing unusually cool temperatures particularly so at night and we could well get ground frost tonight and tomorrow night up across the northern parts of the country maybe even a little bit of air frost in the Scottish Glens with temperatures going very close to freezing. This is how the UK Met is looking for Tuesday this is how the UK Met looks on Tuesday so a ridge of high pressure very close to the country I've got some lower pressure mode coming into the north and west and basically through like the middle part of next week we see that ridge sort of weakening as low pressure comes in from off the Atlantic with a weather front bring showers or maybe some longer spells of rain and uh, it's going to be quite warm ahead of that though so like in the south and south east you probably see temperatures into the low 20 Celsius but behind it wind turns westerly and it does turn cooler as well as we get as far as we go with the UK there is to uh, Friday the 4th of September when winds are like in from west northwest direction it looks a little bit on the cool and showery side then this is how the GFS is looking so the GFS on Tuesday again we've got this ridge extending through the country and going northwards low pressure out to west should be mostly dry uh, on Tuesday into Wednesday and Thursday this weather system gradually eases in from off the Atlantic so coming to high pressure high pressure going up towards Scandinavia so as this system comes in from off the Atlantic it will weaken to some degree but it will still bring showery bursts of, of rain and then as we move up towards uh, day uh, day eight so a week away this is Saturday 5th of September uh, we find that we're just 
edging the ridge in from off the Atlantic. So, uh, again, it's trying to settle down. High pressure just out to our west or to our southwest. But then this low pressure deepens to the north of Scotland as we come up towards day 10. So, this turns us cool and unsettled then. We pull in a northwesterly wind. There's showers or longer spells of rain coming in with these northwesters as high pressure pulls out into the middle of the Atlantic and the low pressure to the north of Scotland. It sets up that cool northwesterly wind. And um, as goes to the extended range with this uh, Jeff S6 F run, it is cool and unsettled really with low pressure never far away. When showers or maybe longer spells of rain too, winds sort of go into the north uh, as well. So yeah, just cool and showery really right way up to the middle part of uh, September. But look what the GMs do. The GM and the ECM are very different. So again, on Tuesday, we're under a, a slight little ridge of high pressure. That weakens as we go through to Wednesday and Thursday. So low pressure comes in off the Atlantic, being showery burst in from the west and then we head up towards next weekend we've got high pressure out to our west for a while then the high pressure starts to ridge in as we're moving up towards day 10 and so by the time we get to day 10 with the uh, gm which is the 8th of september we are under this large ridge at 1025 millibars this la large area of high pressure is dominating weather bringing a lot of dry and you would have thought pretty warm weather with it other air temperatures are looking uh yeah very warm actually so that probably gets temperature up to like the, the mid to may the upper 20 Celsius, certainly down in the southern part of the country as we get to the 8th of September. Uh, ECM also uh, is uh, looking like that as well, I can tell you. So uh, on Tuesday, again, the ridge is over catching mostly dry away far northwest. Every middle part of next week, it turns more and south, especially so in the north. The south probably stays mainly dry. And then the high pressure sort of re-intensifies as we move on towards day 10. So look at this. By day 10, Tuesday, 8th of September, the ECM is a real high pressure fest with high pressure right over top of the country. And again, if we look at the upper uh, temperatures, we can see that they are looking uh, warm to very warm for the time of year as well. So again, that will probably, in fact, the sun sunshine be enough to be lifting temperatures into the mid to upper 20 Celsius. So what a contrast at day 10 between the GEM and the ECL on the one hand, but it's high pressure dominated, and uh, also between the uh, GFS on the other hand, though, but is much more unsettled. Uh, so this is rainfall forecast based on that ECM run from Tometshow.com. So uh, we've got showery bursts of rain in the east today. Otherwise, a fair amount of dry weather out to the north and the west. We get into next week again. A lot of dry weather in the south. Some rain at times in the north and in the northwest too. Uh, heading up towards the uh, end of next week, so so light into next weekend, some showery rain coming through the country then, and then we're back to uh, dry conditions with lots and lots of high pressure and temperatures will be warming up then as well. Uh, these are the options are on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 8th of September via the Icelandic Met Office. Uh, so uh, let's have a look at these. We've got 12 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure just out to our west. Low pressure sort of to our east and south. These winds are in from like a northwesterly direction. About a lot of dry weather, but probably uh, a little bit on the cool side. 11 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure pretty much over top of the country. It's going to be mostly dry and very warm with that. That includes the operational run. 10, again, with high pressure over country extending out into the west to some degree. Lower pressure up to the north. Winds are in from the west with that. A lot of high pressure domination with that. 7, with high pressure just to our east and northeast. Uh, winds are probably pushing up from the south to southeast with that. 6, with low pressure down to our southwest. High pressure up towards Iceland. Winds are coming up from like a sub direction. That could be quite, I'd sort of maybe thundery with that, actually. Um, uh, and quite warm and thundery. And then five with high pressure to our southwest, low pressure to our northwest. Winds tended to be a little bit west northwest. Quite a bit of dry weather with that option. Uh, but maybe a little bit on the cooler side. Most of those options seem to involve high pressure dominating, I have to say. So the GFS idea of low pressure being in control, I mean, we don't see much of that. Uh, we don't see much of that in the ECM ensembles uh, in a week's time. In two weeks' time, or in, day, in, in ten days' time, I should say, in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This one is getting us to the uh, 13th of September. Have 13 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure 
in the middle of the North Atlantic. Low pressure is to our east and southeast. Jet stream and wind flow is going something a little bit like that. So unsettled and and uh, unsettled and quite cool, I think, with that one. Ten with high pressure out to our west. A ridge extending into the UK. Quite a bit of dry weather, but could be a little bit on the cool side. Nine with low pressure down to our south. They're going to be more. That's more unsettled option. Eight with deep low pressure over top of the country. Obviously, that can be very unsettled. Six with high pressure to the east. Low pressure is to the west. Winds are coming up from the south. That's going to be very warm. Could be a little bit thundery. And five with low pressure, deep low pressure centred over and just to the east of the country. High pressure out in the middle of the Atlantic. Winds in from the north. That's going to be very unsettled and quite cool as well. Finally, CFSB 2B is a 500 bit of our heights broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 29th of August, 4th of September. The coming week has lowish pressure around the country, but this ridge from the southwest is extending in, gradually turning things drier as the week progresses. Week two is going to be the uh, 5th to the 11th of September with high pressure just out to our west. Winds are coming in from like a northwesterly direction with that. So mainly settled, the Atlantic's blocked off, but probably a little bit on the cool side, if anything. Week three is the uh, 12th to the 18th of September. High pressure centered just over to the west of the country. Quite a lot of dry weather with that one. Again, winds are sort of westerly there coming in uh, with the so not a heat wave, but uh, but settled. And then the 19th to 25th of September is low pressure dominated. Low pressure about to the north and west. Winds go into a west southwest direction. So that's turning cooler and more unsettled as well as we go through into week four. So it is a mixed bag, but uh, overall nothing overly dramatic. And you don't really expect overly dramatic weather at this time of year. We normally get like a gradual transition from summer to autumn. It looks like that sort of thing we've got on the way. The Interesting point, I think, is around day 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, when we've got this split between the GFS, which is going really quite on South and Autumnal, and the, uh, and the E7 and the GM, which obviously are much more high pressure and anticyclonic, bringing a lot of dry and warm weather. So we have to wait and see how that re resolves itself, uh, which one's going to be right. Uh, as we've got two against one, I'd probably go more towards the ECM and uh, GM idea of high pressure dominated weather. But I would complete discount the idea that it turns uh, significantly more unsettled for the second week of September. And then we should wait and see where we go, of course, beyond that as we head up towards the middle part of the month. But yeah, a proper old contrast between the GFS and the ECM today. Uh, right, so that's it for your videos for today, actually. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Make sure you check out the season we're out for the autumn of 2020. That will be placed on the autumn updates page later with a written summary. Uh, tomorrow, we've got a very big day coming up at Gaza. Tomorrow, we're going to start off with the autumn forecast. So, we've done three months of autumn updates. It's all been building up to tomorrow when we release Gaza Webby's autumn forecast. We're going to have the final Gaza Webby's Sunday roundup of the year. The last Sunday roundup of 2020 will be coming up tomorrow. Uh, around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to have a nice little premiere. Uh, just a premiering the winter 2020-21 sneak peek and explain what goes into the winter forecast. So we go through methodology, talk about all things we'll be looking at through winter updates. I'll show you a couple of uh, long-range models as well. And there will be live streaming from 6 o'clock. As ever with Sunday live streams, it will be pushed more towards the longer range. I'm not sure what yet. Probably CFS V2 data. That is always something to look at from the CFS. And uh, yeah, we'll be taking questions and just generally check in and see how we're all doing. And that's going to be from 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. So a very, very busy day coming up uh, to Gab's Weather's Tomorrow. And then on Bank Holiday Monday, of course, we've got the historic weather video uh, looking at uh, the autumn of 1993. Uh, right then, for today's video, so that's all for now. And thanks for watching.